Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending our demo day presentation. Um, this is Dawn, um, and we're going to jump straight into what is Dawn. So Dawn is your intelligent gateway to Ethereum. It is a consumer wallet piece of software that a user downloads, and it gives them superpowers to help them use Ethereum. Now, we're going to dive into exactly what that means as we go through. So who are we to start with? So um, there's two of us. There's myself, Tom. Um, and there's also Isaac. We're a crypto native and experienced engineering team. Um, I started off studying physics and then was an early employer at Aztec Protocol as a roll up scaling company. Took a quick diversion to AI and uh, built one of the early GPT-3 products and then came back to crypto and uh, was working at Faye. My smart contract at Faye held uh, tens of millions of dollars, moved to uh, hundreds of millions on chain. Isaac um, has won multiple Apple scholarships, was one of the earliest, uh, one of the youngest employees at Rakuten and was early at Burst, a payments company acquired by Square. So what problem are we trying to solve? Well, these are some screenshots of uh, the dominant wallet that was in the space when I first entered the space in 2018, 2019. And basically, crypto UX has not really changed. Like You will recognize this view, and it's widely kind of, I sort of believed in the industry, and we certainly believe this, that the experience is still noisy, chaotic, and complex. We're still like managing chains. We're still blindly signing data. We still have like DAP connections that are failing here and there. And we really think it's holding back DAPs and adoption of the space more broadly. So we set about trying to solve this problem originally a few months ago, and we shipped uh, something called the Safari extension. And people loved it. So you can see uh, Jesse here kind of tweeting about it. And basically, this was um, kind of like a, a little native pop-up that you got in Safari on your iPhone. And it was this one-click DAP connection to let you sign transactions and send uh, transactions on DAPs. Did a bunch of collabs with different DAPs, um, and it was incredible. But kind of taking a step back, we thought we could do a lot more, and we thought we could tackle these challenges with um, something else. And now we're super, super excited to be talking about what we're working on. So Dawn AI. So um, Dawn AI is your AI-powered wallet. Um, we think that there's going to be a future where when someone signs up to use Ethereum and crypto, they come into the space and they have this trusted advisor, this assistant that is deeply knowledgeable about crypto, who can educate them and talk them through how to send a transaction, how to use Uniswap. It's insane that sometimes to use Uniswap, it takes three transactions if you're bridging and then approving and then swapping. And Dawn AI is meant to be a wallet. It is a wallet that you can talk to. It will route transactions for you. It will learn from you as you go and recommend content that you'll be interested in. So here's a quick demo of how someone would use Dawn AI. So you get some icons, some prompts. You can talk to your wallet. You tell it exactly what you want to do. Here, a user is sending $10 worth of ETH to Coily.eth. And then Dawn will go and figure out how to do it. You can also uh, interact with protocols that you're interested in. So um, you're going to see here buying Aave with USDC. And basically, Dawn is going to route that for the user. And the user never has to talk to the individual protocol. Protocols become much more like SMTP and HTTP than they currently are. So we think the future of Ethereum and using Ethereum is maximal abstraction and intelligence built into everything that you do in Ethereum with a trusted guide on your way. So please go sign up. There's a waiting list. Uh, we're going to be rolling out some of the first BC users in a couple of weeks. Uh, so please put your name down and uh, we would love to hear your feedback. So that's Dawn. Very happy to uh, take any questions that people might have. Cool. So I'll be monitoring the questions. First question is, how do you think about defensibility versus other competitors who might also want to create this kind of conversational interface to Ethereum? Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, we think it basically comes down to, so a wallet is in a very, very good place where um, a wallet, just by the nature of being the gateway that a user experiences, that it can see what a user is doing. So it can see like your on-chain activity, it can see dApps that you're exploring and uh, using and and so we see defensibility as uh, basically fine-trained agents for every single user. So the more a user uses Dawn, the more information Dawn knows about that user and about what they're interested in, what they're not interested in, and the more fine-tuned and relevant we can train some of these algorithms. Um, it's not just purely the conversational kind of interface. We feel like the whole wallet experience needs to become more intelligent. The dashboard to a wallet should be customized to every single user. Like a wallet should be seeing what a user likes to do and train and like surface relevant content to that user. Um, so be, over time, we believe that we can get a data moat and, um, with through that data moat, you can, uh, achieve some defensibility as you go on. Cool. Thanks. The next question is what AI infra are you using under the hood? And what about outside routing infra if you're using any at all? Yeah. So currently, um, just for the first version, we're using, uh, yeah, open AI stuff. So GPT 
3.5 turbo uh, just to get started with. Um, as we go on, we're going to be fine tuning that. Uh, we also want to host our open source uh, uh, versions of that. People have been training kind of open source versions of this that you can fine tune and start to run some of that ourselves. Um, but at the moment, it, it, we're just kind of relying on that stack. And then over time, we're going to be um, um, building that ourselves, building out the kind of hosting and the deployment. Well, and one more question. Um, isn't it particularly dangerous to use LLMs for financial transactions since they hallucinate all the time and users might not pay attention to catch it? Yeah, so I guess the biggest first thing to point out is that everything that a user sees uh, first gets simulated. So like everything that you saw in that demo uh, just before first gets simulated and we kind of show the user what this transaction would do. Um, at no point does a transaction get executed that a user's not in the loop for and like explicitly approving. Um, and you can also begin to kind of build some uh, rail guards into, into these things where like the LLM has to choose a particular tool that it has to use for its job. And if it doesn't fit that tool, then it can report that it doesn't necessarily know. Uh, but the kind of key thing is that everything gets simulated and a user is always in the loop to authorize or, or decline um, something. Got it. I think we have time for about two more questions. So I'll ask them now. One of them is, what's your position on data privacy given the sensitivity of financial user actions? Yeah, so I think there's kind of two strands to this. So in Ethereum, almost everything anybody does currently is available on-chain publicly. Um, so as soon as like someone um, uses a wallet service, like all of their financial activity currently is available on-chain. So um, on-chain stuff is completely public. I think like, the more difficult kind of thing and the fine kind of balancing line is like the soft information that a wallet can find, which isn't necessarily on chain. That's where the kind of balancing line is. And I think that comes down to um, a very like opt-in kind of procedure. A user has to explicitly give uh, permission to um, have some of these things strained on um, as they go. And I think this is a bit bigger challenge with AI stuff more broadly and like kind of society and people are going to have to get make that kind of judgment call as we go forward, like are the benefits of increasing personalization and increasing relevance and very, very targeted kind of stuff. Um, it does that justify the reward. And so that's a very personal decision. And so that um, comes down to the individual user at that point. Got it. Uh, do you use anything for key management infrastructure? So something like MPC or do you leverage seed phrases? Yeah, so currently um, co-founder Isaac built um, or wrote our key management uh, software. So currently it's a EOA account. Um, currently, we're very, very excited about account abstraction as everybody is. Um, so we'll be migrating to smart contract wallets um, in due course. Um, but currently, yeah, our key management software is open source and um, at dawn key management library. Um, but account abstraction, we're also super, super excited about. It's another, another avenue to increasing abstraction and removing kind of gas and switching and all that kind of stuff. Great. I'll actually ask two more questions since we have uh, a little bit of time. One more is sure. how extensive and complex can the prompts be? So it makes sense for something like swapping, buying, selling, et cetera. But how far can you go with the request? So we can go, we think we can go very fast. So like the demo you saw was quite basic, but like um, these things are so cool. You can um, basically feed chat history to LLMs and then the LLM can kind of look through the chat history and it can infer something about what you've previously said to inform what it's going to do next. And, um, you can like specify like slippage requirements and um, and chain begin to chain reasoning together and um, and so basically a lot more complex than what you just saw there and also we're super super excited like there's lots of technologies that are on an exponential rise but what you can do in two years time uh, compared to what you can do now I think most people find very hard to like imagine and believe and so this this whole area of like increasing abstraction and what you can do with an LLM is going to get that surface area is going to get broader and broader. Um, when I first started building Outbound, so the GPT-3 product I built back in the early days uh, was called Outbound. It was a sales support tool. And it basically wrote cold emails um, for like sales agents to send them. And like the step between what you could do that then and like now um, is already huge. And so um, we're very, very bullish that you're going to be doing much more complex um, rooted things as time goes on. Well, cool, I love that optimistic take. So last question, can you transact on L2s with Dawn slash do cross-chain transactions? You won't be do, able to, yes, when we release. Because um, there's now some cool uh, bridging tech um, where cause it's insane that you can sometimes have like a ton of assets on one chain, but then on another chain, you don't have enough gas to go pay for something and, and that just needs to completely go. Um, so yes, you will be able to. Cool, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Tom.